going on today guys, Mass Hater here, and today we'll be talking about sampling. Is AI gonna end sampling? And no, I'm not talking about one of those shitty apps that generates generic samples for you. I found an interesting article earlier today that I think we should talk about. Before we get to that, make sure you subscribe and like the video if you haven't. If I get to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year, I will shave my eyebrows. I'm not gonna regret that. Okay, let's get into it. So this article was posted earlier today by Tracklib ironically. Artificial digging, how Google's AI now reveals what producers sample. Yeah, you heard that correctly. So I'm gonna quickly go over what sampling is for anyone who's under the age of 10. But if you're under the age of 10, you shouldn't be watching my videos anyway, so get out of here. Sampling is a reuse of a portion of a sound recording and another recording. Samples may comprise elements such as rhythm, melody, speech, sounds, or an entire bars of music and may be layered, equalized, sped up, or slowed down, repitched, looped, or otherwise manipulated. It became popularized through hip hop music. Now, obviously to legally use a sample, you should get clearance from the sample holders, but this is not always the available path for a music producer. If you are a small sample based producer, you are likely not going to be able to afford the clearance for several songs. So usually involve paying for an advance up front as well as a percentage of royalties going forward. You can also use websites such as Tracklib to get clearance for samples, ironically, but they only have certain songs. If you don't believe sampling is creative, I mean, listen to a few of these songs here. Don't act like you don't know. We were sitting at home in your mama's living room cause it could be as simple as someone looping a song and then you know changing the context of it or it can be as strange as someone taking a song using a little two second segment of it and pitching it down negative 14 semitones and it's a completely unrecognizable song speaking of which so this is the original sample by herbie hancock You pitch it down negative 14 semitones. <laughs> and as you can see there, you have Shook Ones by Mob Deep. So this song was sampled back in 1995 and it wasn't discovered until 2011. And this is one reason why a lot of people try to unearth samples. It can be extremely creative and it can be really hard to find them. And that brings us to the problem I'm gonna talk about today. So there are a community of sample hunters out there, obviously, because why wouldn't there be? There's a community for everything these days. And they're often trying to find extremely rare or untapped into samples. They're samples that were so creatively done that no one's able to recognize them and they haven't been able to for over two decades. So members of this community have dabbled with using Shazam as well as Google in order to help them find samples that they couldn't find otherwise with just their ears. So the leader of the sample hunting community who goes by the name Lobelia stated that when Google Assistant helped me find South City Midnight Lady by the Doobie Brothers as a guitar sample in Face to Face, a Daft Punk song, in late 2021, I realized that this method could be huge. She recalls, especially because at that point, we didn't even know that sound was a separate sample. We actually thought it was part of another sampled record. Now I'm gonna show you guys the sample here in question. It's actually moderately concerning, or it's at least moderately concerning if you are a, a sample based artist. So this is the original sample here. So it's just that little guitar sample, right? So just that little guitar sample put on top of another, I believe another sample in the Daft Punk song. And then here's another original sample here. So obviously it's a very small segment there. Uh, you could even argue it could be possible that it's just a regular guitar that just happens to be playing the same note because it's such a small segment. But it does sound very, very similar. Like it's, it is most likely that sample. Now, for anyone who has sampled in the past or knows anything about sampling, your eyes should be wide open right now because that was an extremely small segment of music to be able to recognize. It was literally like a note or two. So if you sample a note or two, you can actually be recognized by Google AI. So apparently in mid-2022, Google Google's AI assistant leveled up quite a bit, far above Shazam. A sample hunting member named DJ Pasta, yeah, that's his actual name, figured out a way to utilize it. I figured out a method to run audio directly from my PC into Google Assistant with software called Bluestacks. I was mostly trying out a few Todd Edwards samples that I had been looking for at the time. To my surprise, Google Assistant song recognition found most of them. Eventually, I had the idea to try out shorter samples like Carrie Lucas, Sometimes a Love Goes Wrong. And upon discovering how good this technology was, they were able to find a bunch of other unrecognized samples, including undiscovered samples from Mob Deep, Madlib slash Quasimodo, 
Nujabis, Daft Punk, and Mojo. And many of these samples were unrecognized for nearly two decades now. In the case of that Mob Deep one, that's actually uh, 27 years. It's almost three decades. So Shazam and Google both use similar audio fingerprinting methods, but Google's technology, like I said earlier, is far more advanced. According to this article here, Google Assistant can even detect samples less than a second long, and is usually able to detect samples that have been chopped or time stretched. With Shazam, they'd often have to try to change the tempo as well as the arrangement in order to get it to possibly recognize it. And according to this article, there's also ways to trick Google Assistant in order to give results for really short samples, including time stretching a sample or creating a cross-faded loop, as well as using AI stem separation, such as Isotope RX. There are better tools than that nowadays, though. Let's not tell them about it, though. Although I'm sure Isotope RX is good enough. Now, why is this a concern? These regular people on Discord were able to figure this out. It's only a matter of time before record labels start cracking down on this or YouTube, Spotify, etc. So that's why we're talking about the topic today, the title, the title of the video. Sampling may be in trouble. Now, what does this mean? I don't think there's too much to worry about for like smaller sample-based producers, at least in terms of lawsuits. You may want to eventually consider switching over to Tracklib or something though. But I do think it's a matter of time before there's going to be copyright claims or strikes on every sort of sample piece of material on the internet, for uncleared samples that is. Although it does beg the question, how would they know whether a sample was cleared or not if they use some sort of system to detect samples on the internet? Now, one thing I want to talk about is the fact that Tracklib put out this blog because they are one of the people who stand to benefit the most from this. I mean, you can call it shady, you can call it opportunistic, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it does put a bad taste in my mouth though that the people most likely to benefit from this put out this information. If they get people worried that their uncleared samples will get copyright claimed or striked, then more sample-based producers are gonna start going to Tracklib in order to get samples. And of course, at the bottom of the article, they have an ad for Tracklib. Tracklib is a crate digging platform to sample and clear original music. The service makes sample clearance fast, easy, legal, and affordable. So they just had to put that in there in your face after getting you completely scared. And this comment here sums this up perfectly. I think the call to action of this is make sure you use Tracklib to see you with all those unlicensed samples. Now, personally, I do think it is a shame that these sample hunting people decided to go to these links. And, it, and since they did, like they, sh they should maybe not have like told people, although it probably would have come to light eventually regardless. Whether or not we're talking about the legality of sampling and the ethics of it, it is stealing the fun out of sample digging or sampling in general. Anyways, that's it for this video today, guys. Uh, I know this one wasn't too funny, but I thought this was a really interesting topic to talk about, and I don't think anyone else has talked about it yet unless someone else uploads a video about this today. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are down in the comments. If you made it this far in the video, type the word sandbox down in the comments. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Check out my second channel if you haven't. I'll see you guys next time.